Hello and welcome to Engineering Simple. Today I would like to continue the discussion on complex numbers. If we have C equal to A plus J B times B, A and B real numbers, then we will see that the magnitude of C is equal to the square root of quantity A squared plus B squared. Then the angle of C is inverse tan of quantity B divided by A. Now let's look at the graph to the right, which is a, repre a graphical representation of C. Then if we look at cosine theta, we find that cosine theta is equal to A divided by C. Then we square both sides to get cosine theta squared is equal to A squared divided by c squared. Then sine theta is equal to b divided by c. If we square both sides, we get sine theta squared is equal to b squared divided by c squared. Then we add both sides of the two equations. Then we get cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared is equal to quantity a squared divided by c squared plus quantity b squared divided by c squared which reduces to quantity a squared plus b squared divided by c squared. We know from trig it's always true that cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared is always equal to 1. So the previous equation reduces to 1 equal to quantity a squared plus b squared divided by c squared. With some rearrangement, we get c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Since a squared plus b squared is always positive, we can take the, squ the square root of both sides. Square root of c squared is equal to square root of quantity a squared plus b squared, which reduces to magnitude of c is equal to square root of quantity a squared plus b squared. Now, if we look at the graph to the right, tan theta is equal to b divided by a. And if we take the inverse tan of both sides, we get inverse tan of tan of theta is equal to inverse tan of b divided by a, which reduces to theta is equal to inverse tan of b divided by a. The summary, if we have c equal to a plus jb, then the magnitude of C is equal to the square root of quantity A squared plus B squared. The angle of theta, or sorry, the angle of C is equal to the inverse tan of B divided by A. When we are dealing with the inverse tan, we, would, we need to watch for the sine of theta. At the example, in the example below, we'll demonstrate why we, we need to watch for the sine of theta. Let's assume we have C1 equal to 2 minus J times 2, then theta1 is equal to inverse tan of negative 2 divided by 2, which reduces to the inverse tan of negative 1 which is negative 45 degrees. Now C2 equal to negative 2 plus J2, then theta2 is equal to the inverse tan of 2 divided by minus 2, which reduces to the inverse tan of negative 1, which is minus 45 degrees plus 180 degrees, which is 135 degrees. So if you look at C1 and 
C2, they both reduce to the inverse tan of negative 1, but they are different. The reason being is because C2, the real part, lays in the negative side. So if you, are, if you think about it counterclockwise, you are going in the direction of 180 degrees. So you have to add 180 degrees to get the right number. So we can solve the previous uh, example graphically. So if we look at the graph to the left, which is a representation of C1, so you can see that so the so the direction is in the is counterclockwise. So if we look at the horizontal line, then it's a negative 45 degrees uh, counterclockwise. Then if we look at the graph to the to the right, which is a representation of C2. So if you go counterclockwise from the horizontal line, it's 135 degrees. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to Engineering Simple. And if you have any questions, you can email me at my email below. Thank you and have a good day.